All right, hi folks, welcome to the Blitz unit. Um, so in this unit, we're gonna review kind of all the genres of reading. We're gonna look at writing and we're gonna look at the most tested uh, and most missed teaks in our district um, and kind of see what we can hit one more time before star. So uh, I went to the Blitz resources for English 2 and I went down to the nonfiction section because I know um, roughly half the test uh, in the past has been nonfiction. And uh, I picked an article that I really liked called Study, Language, Not Religion or Birthplace Defines National I Identity from the Washington Post and New Zella. Um, and if you go here, we have a link to the, to the article and down here we have some text dependent questions. And I'll get more of those text dependent questions in a minute, but this is kind of what it looks like if you haven't seen it or if you haven't looked at it in a while. Okay, so these are the essential teaks that could have to do with nonfiction, right? Analyzing arguments for supporting evidence or pertinent examples. This could also be informational. I just put arguments because it's English too. Um, analyze how authors use uh, literary devices and language for a specific purpose. Um, analyze between denotative and connotative words. Um, dictionary skills and using um, vocabulary or words in context and knowing that uh, and making inferences within the text and obviously author's purpose. Okay, so these are uh, just some of the questions from these Blitz resources back here that I pulled. There's like eight or nine questions and I just pulled three that to me have to do with um, evidence or claims that the writer probably used. Um, so how they support their argument and also they get to author's purpose. So, you know, in, um, in the star test, author's purpose isn't usually like one big thing. Like the article was meant in order to uh, analyze and inform, right? It's usually a specific line or paragraph or set of words and what was their purpose. And so we're kind of getting a little bit more um, into the minutia of the, of the words in the articles, okay? So these are some that uh, might be good practice for that. And they're kind of aligned to those really specific teaks at the beginning, right? The um, author's use of language, purpose, um, examples that they use that are pertinent, et cetera, et cetera. So the resource built here, other than the text and the questions, is this same mean chart. Old school Kelly Gallagher, right? High yield strategy that maybe you're already using or maybe you haven't used because of the virtual setting. Um, but what does it say? What is a literal meaning? So you would take literal text evidence from something that you read, put it there. And then as a, as a class or individually or in small groups, you guys would say, what can we infer from that? What does it mean? Okay. So one way you could do this is you could have kids pull for these specific questions. Like you could, or you could already have this um, in a, a T chart for them. If you want to do really specific stuff, that's one way. The other way could be, you could say what sticks out to you in paragraph three, see what they write down and then give them the rest of this. That way you can kind of see, okay, um, yeah, where they're really close already to this, the thinking of the text. The other thing you could do is you could give them this first and just say, hey, what stood out to you guys? Just fill out this side. Um, and then let's go back and look at these questions and see if we can kind of find some answers based on our text evidence, right? There's a lot of ways to use the same mean chart and still answer these questions. So you could um, pre-fill it for them or fill it in together for those specific questions. You could have them go to those paragraphs and see what they notice. That would be less of a scaffold, right? The most scaffold would be filling it out for them. The next would be go to those specific sentences or paragraphs and see what shakes out. And then the most organic would be to let them see what, what sticks out to them and then kind of go over the questions. Um, but the reason I picked this is because it's high yield. Um, it's easy for kids to do. A kid could do this on test day um, and make a chart on the back of their testing paper or on scratch paper. So this is um, a really transferable strategy that also kind of gets to a lot of the different teaks, um, especially in nonfiction, but really quite frankly, across all the reading. Okay, so you might use this not just for nonfiction, you might use this for poetry or, or uh, even fiction for that matter, but I thought it might be a nice strategy that you could use here. So for example, this is sort of set up like the, um, like the other, uh, hyperdocs where you have some questions you kind of use as discussion or think you together or sort of do formative checks along the way during a lesson. And then there's one question at the end that you're really collecting and kids are really doing on their own. So kind of back to that other idea where you might have some of this filled out. So maybe what you could do is 
um, have the kids fill out this part and have a good discussion. And then you give them the one question that you really want to assess and see if they understand what they meant. So I just took this quote here that's from that last section of the hyperdoc and put it in there. And then this is the one that they're going to have to answer what it means or what they can infer. And they're going to do so to answer this question. The author includes this information primarily too. What is the purpose of this information? How is it developing their argument or what specific purpose is it doing? Um, those are the kind of things we're looking for. And all these questions are uh, starlight questions that we've gotten from uh, sentence stems from the actual tests or previous tests. So this is one way to kind of use our star blitz materials and bring in a chart. Um, the reason why I have this activity here is kind of twofold. I want to give you something new in case your kids are really bored or really disengaged. I know that this isn't too much different than answering the question, but maybe just looking at a kind of clean, fun looking chart is just a little bit different than what they're usually doing. Just like when kids are in person with you, doing a foldable in person tends to just perk up the room a little bit. Um, any sort of difference in the classroom, any sort of novelty kind of perks things up. So it's meant to do that. Um, maybe the one of the reasons your kids haven't been successful is because they didn't have uh, enough scaffolding or they needed a different kind of scaffolding. And so this chart is meant to do that. Here's another way to scaffold um, if kids are still struggling. And also because this is something that a kid could turn around and do on the star test without you there. It's not a super fancy foldable or anything, just boom, boom, T-chart. And a kid could do this if they needed to, um, if it was helpful for them on the star test. So I hope this resource is helpful for you. I hope this gives you a new way to, to think about um, the star resources. Those questions were never meant to be sort of a worksheet that kids just kind of do on their own without any sort of teaching or instruction around. They are meant to be questions um, to help you review specific techniques and specific skills for the star um, and you know use as many or as few as you need to get to those skills and they're meant to be text dependent so we're really honing in on specific uh, paragraphs or wording in a text the way that the star does all right